Thank you. Have a great weekend and, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of myself and Minister McDonald, I want to thank you for being here today and thanks to Ghost Kitchen for having us. And thank you, Mark. What, what a great uh, organization. I'd also like to give a shout out to Richard Kipp and Mark Joy from Ghost Kitchens. I'll tell you, it's an incredible operation they've got going and it shows once again the talent and entrepreneurship that exists right here in Ontario. Friends, our government has a plan for growing a stronger economy, an economy that works for everyone. It's a plan that's getting more people into skilled trades. It's attracting investment to create good jobs in our auto and manufacturing sectors. It's a plan that is connecting resources and industries in Northern Ontario to the future of clean steel and electric vehicles. And it's a plan that's building roads, bridges, and highways, expanding subways and public transit, and constructing more homes, all for a growing province. We're building Ontario as we do, our government is working for workers in this province to make sure everyone has a chance to succeed. It doesn't matter if you work in skilled trades, for a big company, a small company, or a, like a growing number of people, a rideshare app. In Ontario, we aren't leaving any workers behind, absolutely no one. Rideshare app drivers are hardworking women and men striving to make a living in the new economy, the gig economy of digital platform workers. They deserve every opportunity to earn a living and provide for their families. That's why I'm pleased to announce that later today our government is introducing groundbreaking new labour legislation. Legislation that would make Ontario the first province in Canada to establish a minimum wage and other important rights for the digital platform workforce. Those rights include more clarity around hours and pay calculation, protection against dismissal from a digital platform without proper notice or explanation, and the guarantee that any tips or gratuities the workers earn will remain where they belong, in that worker's pocket. In the last two years, we've seen huge shifts around traditional labor markets, and as we build a resilient economy, our government must keep pace with those changes. We know that the gig economy is one of the fastest growing employment sectors in Ontario, and that as many as one in five Canadians currently take on work via a digital platform. That's fully 20% of the population. So we're listening directly to them and understanding how we can create the environment to help them thrive because government can't create the jobs, but we can create the right conditions and environment for businesses to flourish and jobs to grow. Earlier today, we had a tremendous roundtable discussion with small business owners from all over the province. Hardworking entrepreneurs on the leading edge of creating Ontario's economy of tomorrow. And they reaffirmed the need to guarantee for all workers their pay hours and benefits. They want fairness and to have their work recognized as it should be. Well, my friends, our government listens to workers and is here to work for them because protecting our digital platform workforce is more than just making sure that our labor laws stay up to date. It's about achieving our promise to make Ontario the best place anywhere to live, work and raise a family. Our province has come so far, and we can't afford to go back to the politics of no. Instead, our government is saying yes. Yes to building, yes to investing, and yes to workers. Friends, let's say yes to the better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. We will now take questions from the media, one at a time, from the microphone. Those with questions could please form a line behind me. There'll be one question and one follow-up, please. Getting to as many as we can. Good morning, Premier. Good morning. Um, is there any, you mentioned last week that the Ontario government was looking for new ways to send a message to Russia. 
Have you d found any new ways? And do you think that the federal government should be doing more, such as banning Russian oil? You know, uh, Russian oil, I, I, I believe the last time I looked, they're importing about $18 billion, 18 or $19 billion. Uh, that's something that the, the federal government uh, will have to deal with, and we're, we'll be in discussions with the federal government to make sure that uh, every nut, every screw, and anything that uh, Russia is trying to import, uh, then they'll, they'll be punished. But then again, that's that's up to the federal government. That's not up to us. What what I saw over the weekend is the resilience of the the Ukrainian people over in the Ukraine. You know the support they had, uh, not only just around the world, but here uh, in Ontario. And you know when people are out there supporting, it wasn't just from the Ukrainian community. It's everyone. Uh, supporting the, the fight against Russia, uh, supporting uh, Ukraine, and as a province, what I can say, if the federal government can get people here, uh, we'll make sure they're taken care of, uh, we'll put them through settlement services. I know everyone, including obviously the Ukrainian community, will step up. Uh, we, we have jobs here, our economy is just thriving right now, we'll be there to support uh, the people of Ukraine. Thank you, Premier. Thank you. Um, the proof of vaccination mandate ends tomorrow in, in a lot of settings. Um, restaurants say that a lot of people are still very cautious about going out, so um, they need the government to say it's safe to go out. So do you think that it's safe to go and dine in a restaurant whether the people around you are vaccinated or not? Yeah, when we brought in these passports, we said it'd be time limited on the advice of Dr. Moore. Now we're taking the advice of Dr. Moore and getting rid of them and I'm always going to follow the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, Health and Science, and, and there's no doubt, still be cautious. This is going to be the Wild West. Be cautious. We aren't through this yet. We see light at the end of the tunnels getting greater every day, but um, we're, just, we're just glad through the hard work of everyone in Ontario we're able to take uh, the next step. Hi, Premier Richard from the City News. I want to start with a question from my colleague Cynthia Mulligan, if I could. Uh, your worker bills, like the one you're talking about today, don't fit with your conservative ideology, at least in the early days uh, of your, your term. Uh, you were the one that scrapped the plan increase to the minimum wage when you first took office. The question, Premier, have you awakened your inner liberal here? <laughs> you know something, I, our family's always hated political stripes, Richard, we really have. I think we get support from all all different traditional voters, but in, in, in saying saying that, no, times have changed. We we have to make sure that uh, as we, we see inflation hitting everyone, uh, I'm so happy that we made the minimum wage $15 an hour. I'm happy that we scrapped the tolls on 412 and, and uh, 418 and, and just putting more money into people's pockets, getting rid of the, the sticker, the validation tag, putting another $120 in people's pockets. Uh, you know, that's their money. I, I just, I'm a strong believer in, in trying to support people, especially in the time of need. And, uh, you know, I, it's funny, you, you say, say well, well, my kids call me a bleeding heart liberal now, but I'm pretty physically concerned. So it's all, it's, it's all good. I don't like political stripes. Just do what the people need to be done. It doesn't matter what, what color you are, uh, red, green, orange, or blue. I'm hoping for me you can give us an update on two pocketbook issues that you talked about but not followed through on yet. We could be paying a fresh record for gas later this week. Uh, will you, as you said in November, cut that gas tax before the budget? And secondly, $10 day child care. Parents ask me all the time, when is this happening? You've been saying it's close. No, when it's close. When? I know. I wish, uh, Richard, good, good question. And they ask me all the time. And it is very, very close. That's all I can tell you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get done as sure as we're, we're standing here. but. As I said, I'm not going to do a deal just for making a deal, but the federal government and, and uh, our office have been working very uh, closely with them, and so is the Minister of Education now for the gas tax. You know, we, we cut the four and a half cents, and the next thing you know, the, the carbon tax came in, and another increase on, on the beginning of this month, so it's a total of 11 cents on the carbon tax. And I just, I, I'm frustrated because I feel that we, we take off the five and a half cents and all of a sudden the Fed's throwing this carbon tax and it wipes it right out. That's just not right. I, I, what I'm asking the federal government, put that on hold for at least six months as we're going through this. 
and I will match what the federal government deducts. But I just feel if I do it and the carbon tax wipes it out, it's, it's just it's not fair to the people. That's what it comes down to. So I'm going to work again collaboratively with the federal government. And wouldn't it be great if we both knock off five and a half cents? It gives a little bit of relief, and they and they froze this carbon tax for the next six months at least, at minimum. I'd love to get rid of it, but it is what it is. Um, and I remember Richard when they introduced this, and as everyone knows, I've got along very well uh, with the federal government. There's going to be things we we differ on. This is one of them. Uh, everything's going up. It affects everything. It affects food, getting from point A to point B, and it's just gouging the people. It's just not fair. So my plea to the federal government, you cut five and a half, I'll cut five and a half, then it goes a long ways. But if I cut five and a half, you just add five and a half, it's not fair to the people, it just isn't. Hey, uh, good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Paul. Uh, just asking about the situation with uh, Russia and Ukraine again. Uh, last week you suggested you were talking to Vic Fidelli every day, kind of looking at additional options in addition to what uh, you guys did with the LCBO. Is there anything else that the Ontario government could do to put any financial pressure on uh, the, the, the Russian government? Good question, Colin. You know, we're working collaboratively with them. We'll do everything we can. That's really the federal jurisdiction. Our, our jurisdiction is if we can get the people here, we'll take care of them. Uh, I, we need lots of people because the economy is really moving forward. Uh, I, I take 50, 100, whatever, whatever amount. You can get over here. Uh, you have a home here and uh, we're going to take care of you here. There's employment here. So I just have to get these people uh, to Ontario as quickly as possible and we're working uh, uh, again uh, collaboratively with the federal government. Okay, uh, something else to do with employment. Um, at the end of July, the paid sick days are going to be ending. It's three paid sick days right now. Does your government have any plans to make those permanent or uh, do what some of the other parties are saying, which is increase paid sick leave to 10 uh, days per worker in Ontario? Well, that's something that we can discuss uh, in the future, but maybe I can pass that to the, the Minister of Labor. And he, he came out with a great uh, legislation today, so long, long, say a few years. Well, thanks, Premier. And uh, Colin, as you know, um, our paid sick days will be there uh, for workers uh, throughout this pandemic. But what I'm really excited about, um, we're the first jurisdiction in all of North America that's going to be moving forward with uh, benefits, health benefits and dental benefits for millions of workers uh, across the province that, that don't have benefits uh, today. And uh, as I said, when we announced this uh, a couple of weeks ago, we'll have a panel uh, that'll uh, start in a couple of weeks and they're going to report back uh, to the government with the blueprint for uh, to expand uh, benefits to uh, these workers. Um, it, it is uh, a challenge, I can tell you, because we'll be the first place uh, in North America to, to do this, and I expect um, other jurisdictions across uh, North America to follow Ontario's lead, but we're going to ensure that we have uh, benefits uh, for workers that don't have them today, uh, including gig workers. Good morning, Premier. How you doing? Ricardo Savage with CP24. Yeah, good to see you. Could you elaborate on the greater plan for the economy with respect to, uh, you know, not only survival, but actually getting ahead? Because, you know, when it comes to raising prices, this is a slippery slope because businesses will not reduce their prices just because they've made a, a great profit. So, so th thanks for the great question. You know, you're right. We're, we're in such a competitive global economy right now, and we're competing against Europe, competing against Asia, competing against... Uh, people to the south of us, and we, we have to create an environment for for companies to come here and thrive and prosper and grow, and that's exactly what we've been able to do over uh, the last uh, almost almost four years. That uh, we, we've cut seven billion dollars of burden off the backs of companies, and when you when you create that environment, companies will come here. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'll repeat what I said um, when I when I get the list every single uh, night off Minister Vic Fidelli, uh, you know, we, we, we see companies coming in by the droves and investing millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions and, and billions of dollars. We see it in the, just one sector is the auto sector, is uh, there's, there's going to be uh, tens of billions of dollars in investments, not only with the, the manufacturing of batteries here, but the auto sector itself. The tech sector really seems to be taking off. 
uh, in, a, in a really big way right now. It seems like every single message he sends me a list, it has something to do with the, the tech sector. But my, my biggest challenge right now is, is getting people here. Uh, so it was 315,000, now we're up to 338,000 people we've fallen short on. It's just the, I, I strongly believe it's really due to the, the people of Ontario, uh, they've created this environment, greatest place to live, work, raise a family, right here in Ontario, and that plays such an important role when companies look at opening up here or other other places and the environment of making sure that uh, we're, we're competitive on, on all fronts, no matter if it's electricity rates or, or cutting WSIB by $2.3 billion, just areas like that, cutting red tape and regulations. Um, so those are the, the areas that we have to continue to uh, move forward on. And Premier, my follow-up question, uh, what's your direct message to small business owners and their employees as we you know, start this recovery? Well, I'm really confident when it comes to the, uh, the economy. Um, you know, we're, we're putting more money into people's uh, pockets every single day. That allows them to go out and maybe go for dinner or maybe buy something they might otherwise not be able to, to buy. You know, some people may think that $120 isn't a lot when we got the, the, the stickers, uh, license fees. It, it's a lot. Believe me, you have two cars, it's $240. And that goes directly back into the economy because people are going to go out and spend that and, and drive the economy. I'm just a strong believer that the people of this province can spend their money a lot wiser than all three levels of, of government. And I'm, I'm just a strong believer in that. That drives jobs, that drives the economy, that drives more income up to the uh, Queen's Park coffers, as I, as I say, and it's been proven over the last few years how we've seen the revenues just go right up, which, which is which is a good thing. This will be the last question. Hi, Premier. Um, I just wanted to ask you about masks. I'm taking mine now off so you can hear me. Um, you said that Dr. Moore is going to have a final say, and he has said second week of March, third week of March, we could be through the mask mandate. Are you still confident with the numbers that you're seeing, the decline in the case counts, the, the rise in vaccination rates, tomorrow's the end of the Vax Passport, are you hopeful that if by the end of this month we'll be away from mandatory masks in Ontario as we've seen in New York, California, and other yeah. jurisdictions? First, first of all, I'd love your tan, so I wish I could get <laughs> one off the way. From California. No, no, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Any, anyways, um, no, I, I, right from the get-go, I'm listening to the chief medical officer. It's his advice when they're going to come off, and, and uh, we'll wait for his advice and recommendations. And once he gives the recommendations, uh, we'll, we'll be able to move forward. Uh, what I'm hearing over, over the next few weeks, maybe after March break, when the kids get back, but we'll, we'll see. I don't want to set a date. Um, you know, and there, there's no secret. There's no per person I talk to likes these masks. No one likes them, but. I'm going to follow the advice, and they're, they're not far away. So let's uh, let's all continue working uh, together. And, and do you know what? I, I just want to unite this province. The divide this has created is terrible, and we just need to move forward, put this behind us, and everyone work together. And I just uh, you know, with the global economy and how competitive we are, we need all hands on deck. We need everyone working uh, jointly together. We're going, to, we're going to do fairly well, I'm confident, on the economy. Uh, and on another subject, Premier, I want to ask you, why did you guys change the law that you guys actually changed in the first place back in 2018 to uh, find the, the uh, finance minister and yourself if the budget is later than March 31st? You guys changed it last week so that the budget can be up till April 30th, which I presume is because you want the budget to be the, the re-election platform. Yeah. Uh, but why, why change that? What, is that? Is that why you did it? You, because no, you want the budget? I, I, I can't say we, we did it. Because just because of that, we want to we got to move things uh, forward. It's the time frame. Not every single year there's an election, but what we're we're focused on is making sure that we, we present the plan moving forward for the next four years of growth and prosperity in this province. And yes, did I uh, I, I paid ten thousand uh, dollars back into the government uh, when we didn't meet the, the budget time frame before, and so did the the previous uh, finance minister, but we're, we're putting together a plan until there's clear direction uh, that people know where we're going as a, as a government, as a party, and on 
on June the 2nd, people are going to have a choice. Either want to move forward with uh, making sure that we build roads and bridges and hospitals and schools, um, putting money back into people's pocket, have the economy going, or do you want to go back at 15 years of the previous government that lost 300,000 jobs in this province, highest hydro rates, red tape and regulations, uh, and be blunt, I'll just cut to the chase, it was an absolute disaster under the, the previous uh, government. So the people have a choice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. More questions. More questions. Uh, for a word of time, that's all we can do today. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Anyways, thank, thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.